Greetings. This is Dr. Ronald Wharton. I am a cardiologist at Monitor Medical Center in Bronx, New York. And I'm showing you a little case vignette that I thought uh, was worth seeing because, frankly, I hadn't seen one of these before. I titled this, What the Echo Doesn't See. So here's the history. Um, a 45-year-old gentleman is undergoing pre-employment medical screening. Uh, he has a chest X-ray that reports an enlarged cardiac silhouette. He's asymptomatic. As I said, here's his electrocardiogram in the next slide. I think you all agree that this is a uh, pretty normal electrocardiogram. So here is an echocardiogram that was ordered because of the chest X-ray finding. Parasternal long axis, standard uh, 2D image. You can see the LV function looks normal, but the RV looks quite enlarged. Uh, on 2D imaging, the mitral and aortic valves grossly look normal. You can see in the next slide an M mode through the uh, LV mid cavity going through the right ventricle, the interventricular septum, and then to the infralateral wall. You'll notice that there is a paradoxic um, septal motion, uh, and also there is an exaggerated early diastolic dip, which is to say that when the mitral and tricuspid valves open, uh, it looks like the RV filling is a little exaggerated compared to the LV filling so that the septum has an exaggerated dip into the LV and early diastole. Here we have a parasternal long axis now with color, and you'll notice that the color flow here through the mitral and the aortic valves is normal. Here we have a pulse wave Doppler through the right ventricular atrial tract. You'll notice that the right ventricular ejection period is uh, 290 milliseconds, which is normal. The velocity through the RVOT is normal, so this doesn't look particularly unusual in any way. The flow through the RV looks normal. Could it be a little exaggerated? It's possible. The one parameter we don't know here for sure is the diameter of the right ventricular outflow tract. So to calculate the flow precisely, we would need that parameter, uh, and we don't. Most echoes don't have that parameter. But certainly the flow here looks good. There is trivial, in the next slide, you can see trivial pulmonic regurgitation. And at least uh, from these two slides, you could pretty much infer that there is no pulmonary hypertension present. We now go to the apical four-chamber view here. You'll notice, again, the right side of the heart looks enlarged, but the RV function grossly looks normal. The atrial sizes look normal. The mitral valve looks normal. Um, again, the only remarkable thing here is the size of the right ventricle. And in the next slide, we have uh, a color view of the tricuspid regurgitation. The TR I would characterize as you know, no more than mild. In the next slide, you can see a continuous wave Doppler through the tricuspid valve. The peak velocity here is about 2.6 meters per second. Uh, that would argue against any significant elevation in the PA pressure as well. PA pressure here is probably in the vicinity of about 31 or 32 millimeters of mercury. In the next slide, we see a pulsed wave Doppler through the right superior pulmonary vein uh, and you'll notice that there is uh, an S wave and a D wave, and the two waves are very well demarcated. This would not be in any way unusual. So why is the right side of the heart enlarged? Well, the first thing one always thinks about in an asymptomatic person is an atrial septal defect that never got picked up. But the electrocardiogram was normal. Typically, with uh, an ASD, there's an incomplete right bundle branch block. Uh, with a left or a right axis deviation, depending on whether it's a primum or a secundum uh, ASD. Um, there are sinus venosis ASDs uh, that a transthoracic echocardiogram would not see. Um, the lack of fusion of the S and D waves in the pulmonary vein Doppler argues against a primum or secundum ASD. Um, and the tricuspid valve appears where it's supposed to be. That also argues against any prime ASD. We don't see any flow across the atrial septum. In the next slide, what else do we see? We see the RV systolic function is normal, even though the RV is dilated. The pulmonary valve flow pattern is normal. The PA pressure is 
virtually normal. If it's elevated, it's trivially so. So what do we do next? You know, should we have done a repeat study with agitated saline? Should we do a CAT scan? Should we do an MR? It's hard to say that there's a real uh, likelihood of a primal or secundum ASD here. Sinus venosus ASD is not impossible. Uh, Again, that's uh, typically where one sees anomalous drainage of the right superior pulmonary vein coming into the right atrium uh, from the very, very superior aspect of the uh, interatrial septum. Should we do a CT scan? Should we do a cardiac MRI? What would the next logical study be? Well, before we had a chance to figure that out, the referring cardiologist had already done a CT scan of the chest, and this is what it showed. It showed that there was partial anomalous pulmonary vein drainage returning to the right side of the heart. So this was not a standard pulmonary vein, you know, one of the big four that come into the left atrium, but just one segment of the left upper lobe of the lung had a pulmonary vein draining into the left brachiocephalic vein. And that anomaly was the reason the chest X-ray looked abnormal. And the radiologist actually commented that this is usually an isolated finding without associated cardiac anomalies and usually found in asymptomatic patients. And certainly, I had never heard of this, so I figured I should show this because probably many of you out there haven't heard of this either. Take-home message, once in a while, and I hate to admit this, an echocardiogram is just not enough because had we done a TEE, we have not, would not have seen anything. And had we done a, a study with agitated saline, it would have been normal, and we would have still been looking at each other saying, what should we do next? So, unusual case. I thought it was worth showing. Hope you liked it. Uh, This is Ron Wharton from Montefiore Medical Center for the Heart.org at Medscape Cardiology. Thanks for tuning in.